Welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes, 
R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am always excited, thoroughly excited to be able to share with you. Uh, but if you're accustomed to uh, the way I typically schedule my time, I'm not generally with you at this time. But this is, if you're watching in real time, this is really a special message to really help many of you to uh, power through what is probably a very difficult time, being that this is Valentine's Day 2023. Um, you know, you're looking on the social media and everybody is uh, booed up, as they might call it. Um, everybody has a lot of uh, great things to say about uh, the person in his or her life. And maybe you're sitting there and you're broken because you thought you had that. And somehow this person uh, proved to be everything but a dream. In fact, this person proved to be a nightmare. And you know all of this in your right mind. You know all of this. You know that this person uh, did nothing but subtract from you. You know that this person came with nothing but a handful of withdrawal slips and no deposits. But yet there's something in you that still longs for this person. It's called a soul tie. And this soul tie is preventing you from being able to um, even embrace a new and healthy relationship. I want to talk about something that I dealt with as far back as 2016 um, on a platform that no longer exists. It was a platform called Periscope at the time. And uh, that was the first time that I dealt with this particular subject. I want to talk about, you know, praying to break soul ties. Because you've tried everything you know to try, and it's not worked in the natural sense. And it's because I personally believe, and I wrote the book, break, you know, soul ties, breaking the ties that, that bind. I believe that soul ties are largely, not entirely, but largely demonic. And it gets a grip on your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, to the point you can no longer function normally. You find, you find yourself function, functioning or dysfunctioning is a better way to put it. And you've actually, your soul has actually normalized the dysfunction of this bond you have, this toxic bond this demonic marriage you have to this person that God never gave you and this person that should have never even gotten a conversation. So you're sitting there and everybody else is celebrating, but you're tied up. If you will just give me a few minutes of your time, I believe with all of my heart that God really assigned me to speak this message to you at this time, because this is the beginnings of freedom. Now, a soul tie is an attachment or attraction to a person that is not God ordained. You know, like when you, if you get the book and you read my book relative to soul ties, breaking the ties that bind, um, we'll talk in there a little bit about how it's an ordained soul tie between a husband and a wife, you know, the two become what? One. But when you have um, 
certain intimate relationships with people that God did not ordain, you know, it, it becomes a toxic mi mixture. The relationship connects you to the person in spite of the relationship proving to be hurtful against your better judgment and even against your sense of God's will. That's a soul tie. You know it's hurtful. It's against your better judgment. And you absolutely know that God does not approve, but somehow you're constantly drawn in. It's because you're dealing with a soul tie. Now, a soul tie is usually created through, usually created through illicit behavior, illicit sexuality, or illicit sexual acts, uh, illicit sexual or erotic conversations, or uh, illicit um, visuals, you know, it's usually created through things that are illicit and out of outside of God's will. And these things are known as sexual soul ties. And that's where we find most soul ties um, being developed is in the, the realm of the erotic, the realm of the sexual. Now, there are demonic powers that are introduced with sexual soul ties. And these, these, these demonic spirits must be cast down, cast out even, to take authority and to regain control of life again. Now, when one is seeking deliverance from, uh, from a soul tie, Prayer is mandatory. The individual must personally cast down um, all of the demonic spirits that enforce the bondage. You see, there's a reason you're sitting there and in your right mind, you can say, well, I know that this is wrong. This is not serving me. God is not pleased. But yet you're attached. You're entangled. It's because there are demonic powers behind the bond. And so the individual has to cast down the spirits that are enforcing and even reinforcing the bondage. You know, Jesus talked about the necessity of prayer. And he even talked about the necessity of fasting in the removal of demonic influence. And it's found in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, where it reads like this, How be it, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Yeah. And he was, he was in reference to demonic spirits when you read the full context. So Jesus was discussing the process of casting out or casting down demons. And he said, it requires fasting and prayer. Now, now, as it pertains to soul ties, we must all be aware that there are underlying issues that generate the tension. The behavior is simply the fruit but we have to get to the root of this soul tie. And the root is always where? Beneath the surface. Now, some of the roots of soul ties are abuse. The reason you're drawn to people that do nothing but break you, many times it's because you have a history of abuse abandonment, lust, self-condemnation, ungodly imaginations, and uh, even codependency. All of these things many times are at the base or at the root of what generates or, or what, you know, this soul tie is rooted in. 
and the enemy will create an attachment to a person and the root will go back to some pain from your past. You will be tied to an individual and your mind will be severely blinded to the cause of the dysfunction. You don't know why you're locked in on this person. You don't know why you have this attachment, this entanglement. You don't know what it is because you know better. You, A certain part of you doesn't even want this, but another part of you is, you know, feels like you can't live without this individual. And you sit in there now and you're in full-blown depression because, you know, God has orchestrated a separation between you and this individual, but you're miserable. And you don't understand why. It's rooted in something that's beneath the surface. Listen to what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Watch this. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But notice it says, in whom the God of this world hath what? Blinded the minds. That's one of the tactics of Satan. He blinds the mind. We, we see in this text that Satan may blind the consciousness. Not, not only does he do this to those who are lost, He also does this to believers who have allowed him access to certain areas of their lives. A soul tie blinds the mind of the individual to certain truth. This is what I mean when I talk about in Queenology, I talk about broken consciousness. It's really blinded consciousness. You don't even, you can't see who you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And when the text talks about strongholds, it is speaking of mental containers where thoughts, ideas, imaginations, and desires that disagree with God are held up in the mind. A stronghold is where a demonic influence may continuously influence areas of a person's life from sexuality to eating habits and even relational choices. Strongholds. You keep choosing the same kind of person because there's a stronghold. It goes back to a root that's beneath the surface. And you're looking at it on the surface level and you're, you're saying, what's wrong with me? I, you know, uh, I must be this or that. When the reality is that this thing is stemming from a pain or a trauma from your past. You, you can't even appreciate healthy people. They're not even attractive to you. And you don't realize that this is all stemming from the trauma of your past. Now, as it pertains to soul ties, there are hidden strongholds that reside in many and create the platform for the strength of that soul tie. And these strongholds must be identified. Jesus always identified When he was casting out devils, he always identified the exact spirit that was at the heart of the dysfunction. So now, I know that's a lengthy introduction, but some of you have never heard my teachings on soul ties. So I had to give you that just to give you a, a, a basis that we can launch from. Now let's get into this, prayers to break soul ties. You want to know more, go to Amazon or to my store at rcblakestore.com and pick up the book, Soul Ties, Breaking the Ties that, That Bind. 
prayers to break soul ties. Number one, you're going to have to pray to forgive abusers. How do I break this supernatural, this demonic stronghold off of my life? You're going to have to, first of all, pray to forgive abusers. Because in many cases, the strength of the soul tie resides in a history of abuse. The, the attachment the person has to an individual is many times rooted in a psychological vacuum created by abuse they've suffered from someone in their past. The, the abuse created a need to be needed, a need to be accepted at all costs. So the present soul tie relationship is often the person that stepped into that vacuum and on some level made the abused feel safe and valued, even if that safety was a false sense of safety, even if that sense of value was a, a, a dysfunctional and demonic false sense of value. Now, the person is using a present relationship to prove that they are of value. And the former abuse was not indicative of their lack of value. This is why uh, women in particular tend to choose the same kinds of men. It's because you're trying to prove with the present man that's just like the old man that the old man didn't get it right. And so you, you need the same kind of guy with the same kind of profile to finally treat you like you deserve to be treated. The problem is that you keep fishing in a catfish pond praying for sharks, but you keep coming up with catfish because you cannot satisfy your need for a shark while fishing in a catfish pond. It is likened to a person that has constantly scored one out of ten, and they finally hit a three. Though three is still a miserable failure, they revere the three because it is better than they've known. They have tragically lowered their standard based on their past pain and disappointment. You see, when you've suffered abuse and you start developing these soul tie relationships, you lower your bar far, far, far beneath your standard. Listen to what the Bible says um, in Proverbs 13 and 12. It says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. You keep wishing for someone to love you properly. You know, you, you, you have a history of abuse and abandonment. And so you're trying to fill that vacuum, that void with these relationships, with, with these people who are pretty much the exact profile of the person that abused and abandoned you. And you keep coming up short, but you, you're drawn to that hope deferred, hope put off constantly denied, makes the heart sick. The only way to break the subconscious stronghold of abuse and the impact it makes on your choices is to intentionally forgive. You got to, you got to, in your own heart, you have to go back and you have to literally forgive every person that wronged you. Why is this important? Unforgiveness ties your heart to the spirit of the offender. And this will manifest itself through attraction to people that are not healthy for you. 
but may seem better than the one that abused you, though they are two catfish in the same pond. Your unforgiveness is creating this insatiable attraction because whatever you focus on will develop. And when, you, when you're focused on unforgiveness, you're, it's like a camera. A camera will develop whatever the lens focuses on. If you're focused on the person that abused you and you, you, you just, you're saturated with unforgiveness, you're going to somehow always reproduce that. Now, Jesus demonstrated the necessity of forgiveness on Calvary. Jesus stopped in the middle of, of dying even to <laughs> ask the Heavenly Father to forgive those that were crucifying him. And there's a wisdom in Jesus' action. One of the ways the enemy may rent space in the soul is through unforgiveness. When we have issues that we've not purged through forgiveness, we create openings in our souls for satanic influence. So you're saying, why am I drawn to this person? Why can't I let this person go? There's a satanic influence. Second Corinthians chapter two, verses 10 and 11 says, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Jesus Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Paul counsels the church to forgive a brother that had really messed up, forgive him, you know. And he closes verse 11 by saying, forgive lest we give Satan an advantage over us. Whenever we fail to forgive, we open the door for the enemy. Unforgiveness of another may very well be the glue that connects a person to a present relationship that is unhealthy. Now pray this prayer after me, repeating after me. This is, I call this prayer to forgive offenders, repeating after me, Heavenly Father, now listen, you don't have to be religious and all of that. I hear you say, I'm not really, I don't go to church. Well, you don't have to do all that. We, we're talking about connecting to God and breaking spiritual strongholds off of your life. Now, repeating after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come asking for your help and partnership to forgive every person that has hurt, offended, abused, or mistreated me. I cancel the influence of the spirit of offense, the spirit of abuse, the spirit of molestation, the spirit of abandonment, the spirit of manipulation, and every other spirit that has taken the occasion of my pain to secure a place of influence in my life. Now, Father God, I thank you for unraveling the knots of influence that have been created between me and anyone who is being used as an instrument of deception and distraction by these spirits. I pull down the stronghold of unrighteousness, attractions that reside, or unrighteous attractions that reside in my soul, and intend to cancel my freedom. I forgive. I do not seek apologies or closure from offenders. I only seek the liberation of my soul. I let them go and I reclaim control of my life and future. Now, number two, um, we must pray to receive the Father as all sufficient. You got to pray to receive the, the Heavenly Father, the Creator, the Almighty as all sufficient because another common bond that must be broken in a soul tie relationship is codependency. 
The person is made to believe that they cannot survive without a particular person. You believe that, that you can't survive without this person. So even though this person may have left you or you may have called it off and now you're sitting there and you, 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 you're you living by the phone, ready to dial it at any moment and you're feeling depressed, you, you haven't stopped to think about you're, you, you, you're, you've been lured into a codependent relationship and you believe that you cannot survive without this person, though this person has done nothing to aid or add to you or to help you. The pull is so strong that you will destroy healthy relationships. And watch this. You'll destroy healthy relationships and even current marriages to pursue a person that clearly was not good for you in the past. Yet you feel you need them. They did nothing but break you, but you feel you need them. The psychology here is tied to the lie, I need you. The soul-tied individual becomes addicted to the person. Their soul is tied. It is always unsound to place a person in a space that must be reserved for God. God is the only one we all truly need. One of these days, I'm going to have to get by without Lisa or she's going to have to get by without me, depending on which one of us dies first. And either of us will make it because we will yet have the only one we both absolutely need, and that's God. You got to you got to untie your mind from the lie I need this individual. Psalms 118 and 8 says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You see soul ties are often the consequence of over-reliance and dependence on another person. It it becomes an exercise in learned helplessness, where you've developed this idea that you can't get along without another person. You've become so codependent that you're, um, you know, you're, you're rendered paralyzed. You're socially paralyzed, financially paralyzed, emotionally paralyzed without this person. You have allowed a person to occupy a space in your life that should have always been reserved for God. Sometimes the spiritual bond to an individual is based on declarations. Now listen to this very carefully. Sometimes this this demonic bond you have to this person is based on declarations previously made, things like, I can't make it without you. you you've said that to, to people, you know, and, and see things like this, you know, um, these, these vows give satanic influence a legal stronghold to enforce those confessions. I can't make it without you. I need you. I can't live without you. Listen to what Proverbs 18, 21 says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. These confessions and vows must be reversed. You got to reverse these things that you've declared. I, I can't make it without you. You the only person I will ever love. And this person is demonic. And now God has sent you you know, healthy and godly people, and you can't even receive them because you have given satanic authority to enforce the vows you declared out of your own mouth. Let's pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I repent for creating 
idols in my life. I repent for ignoring your ever abiding presence as I have pursued a person or people to fill a place that should have been reserved for you. I repent for viewing man as my source and making a person the center of my focus. I pull down the stronghold of low self-esteem and the fear of individuality. I cancel every word I've ever spoken that would tie anyone to my soul. I declare I can live life without anyone but God. Your word says in Psalms 27 and 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I reverse every trick and deception of the enemy that works to precondition my mind for needless or neediness of people and codependency. Heavenly Father, I boldly declare you are all I need. I find my total fulfillment and contentment in you. I am no longer looking to man to fulfill my life. You are my fulfillment in Jesus' name. I now receive the affirming peace of the Holy Spirit's presence. Amen. Now let's hurry on. Um, let's hurry on. I have uh, just a few more and then we'll be done. This is number three. Um, we have to pray to redefine, you must pray to redefine yourself as righteous. Another lie that ties the individual to a soul tie relationship is the idea of unworthiness. The strength of the tie is based in a past failure or less than righteous lifestyle that causes the person to define themselves according to their past acts. You know, for instance, a woman uh, who may have had uh, an abortion or a man that uh, abused women may find it difficult to see him or herself as worthy of certain grace. Definitely, you know, when you've gone through things like that, it definitely can prevent you from seeing yourself as being worthy of a good person or a great relationship. And when this psychological barrier exists, it prevents the person from being capable of viewing themselves as worthy. Self-condemnation for past sin creates a poor self-view. And as, as a consequence, the person attracts unhealthy relationships because they subconsciously can't imagine themselves as being worth more. And the lie that ties is, I don't deserve better. So when a good man comes into your life, you sabotage it and run him off because the lie that's working beneath the surface is, you don't deserve better. So you run a good, healthy man off while you're yet attracting dysfunction. Romans 8 and 1 says, There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ to walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit of self-condemnation is a major engine in the perpetuation of certain soul tie relationships. Some are attached to particular individuals because at their core, they don't see themselves as worth more. 
Now, let's pray this prayer for redefinition. Heavenly Father, repeating after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me a self-revelation. I have allowed my past mistakes to define me. I have limited my view of possibilities to a false sense of unworthiness. My choices consciously and subconsciously have been according to this diminished self-view. My relationship choices have been severely impacted by my inability to see myself as you do. Holy Spirit, I ask you to purge every part of my soul that is stricken with a broken self-perspective. Reveal my true worth and give me a sincere desire to cleanse my heart from compromise. Help me to forgive myself and to accept your grace, forgiveness, and view of me. I surrender every relationship that I have developed to your oversight and influence. I give you permission to influence my heart against every relationship that is based on my former sense of worthlessness. I declare that I am free from every stronghold of self-condemnation and poor self-perspective. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, number four and finally is the prayer to break the spirit of perversion. Because the final issue regarding soul ties, at least the final one that I'm going to deal with today, um, and you know the final issue that that regards itself to uh, soul ties and the underlying factors that empower soul ties is the spirit of perversion. When we have opened ourselves to illicit sexual behavior, we entertain the influence of the spirit of perversion. That person lives in your mind. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 16, it says, What know ye not that he which is joined or has a sexual relationship to an harlot, a person that is sexually loose, is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. It's, it's a demonic marriage. It is not an ordained marriage, you know, like God calls for the two to become one. This is something that happens through... Um, you know, demonic sexual connections and the two become one. You become joined to the harlot and the, all of the spirits and everything that goes along with that, you are now a partaker in. There, there's an unholy wedlock that happens with every experience of sexual perversion. You may, you may leave the bed, but the bed never leaves you. The bed never leaves your head. And that, and that experience can serve to raise its head at pivotal moments in your life because perversion is an increasing desire for greater degrees of sexual exploration beyond what is ethical or moral. You know, we're living in a sexually perverted generation. I mean... We're so perverted now, we don't know who a man, who a woman, you know, uh, people, some people say, well, I want to, I, I may wake up tomorrow, want to be a woman, or I may wake up the, the next day, want to be a man, I want to be free to be whatever, I, okay, I hear you, but, you know, you go back just a, a generation ago, we didn't have all of these, all of this stuff that we got going on now, it's because perversion has no limits, Perversion is never satisfied. When one engages in a perverted sexual 
relationship, quite often they are emotionally and physically tied to that person for years, if not a lifetime. This is why it's so dangerous for a woman to give herself sexually to a man that she has no covenant with. Because you could very well be creating a demonic wedlock. And even when God sends you an ordained husband, your body may be present, but your soul may be on the other side of town. Because you run the risk of being tied to a person you've experienced perverted sexuality with for a lifetime. The, the imaginations and memories may tend to spoil future relationships and even destroy the intimacy in a God-ordained marriage. You, you may not even be able to enjoy the husband God gives you because that stronghold, that soul tie you developed in that perverted sexual relationship with, with homeboy is, is showing its head even in the middle of your marriage. So now you, you're struggling to be with a great man because a demonic man still lives in your head. So now let's, let's pray to, I call this the prayer to break the spirit of perversion. Repeating after me, Heavenly Father, I ask you to empower me to break the spirit of perversion that has gripped my soul and made me a slave to relationships that you've not ordained. I repent for engaging in sexual acts that were outside of your ordained will. I cancel the spirit of lust and perversion. I declare that I surrender my sexual desires and choices to the Holy Spirit. I declare myself to be sexually sanctified and cleansed. I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over memories, imaginations, and the spirit of manipulation. I will live according to the spirit and not my flesh. I declare my body and my mind to be the temple of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those are four points that I wanted to make today because I just sense by the Holy Spirit that there are many of you who are fighting with this soul tie pull, especially today. And as the word of God has gone forth, my prayer is that something has been shaken loose in you and that stronghold, the blinders have been pulled from your eyes and the strength of that stronghold has been made subject to the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is present here now as we have prayed together and looked into the word of God together. The anointing of God takes authority over every demonic force. And I command in Jesus' name that you will be free and that your life is heading in a new direction, a new trajectory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to make certain that you go to the website, rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list, and um, be certain to check out all of the online programs. In fact, about it, uh, the program for Breaking Soul Ties is right there on my website. You can get it and begin to go through the program today. It's, you move at your own pace. You have access to all of the videos, all of the information. And, uh, you know, I think it will bless you on your journey. Don't forget to stop by Amazon, pick up the book, Soul Ties, Breaking the Ties That Bind. Uh, thank you, all of you that have sewn into our lives. We, Lisa and I so appreciate you. And um, those of you that may need counseling.
there's a link in the description for better help counseling. If you utilize the link, what will happen is better help will take 10% off of the cost of your counseling counseling. And because I recommended them to you, they will also make a deposit into RC Blake's ministries. Now, um, I think I've said everything I need to say. I think I have. Uh, get ready. Get ready for the official release of my latest book, Me, My Mind, on all platforms. You will have the physical version. You're going to have the electronic version as well as the audio version. The release of that book is coming and I want you to be ready to just light it up when when we officially release it. I thank God for all of you that uh, did the pre-sale through my personal website, but when I release it, I want you to light it up and make certain that you leave your reviews on Amazon. This book is going to change the world. It's a biblical perspective on um, understanding narcissistic abuse and how to uh, overcome it, recover from it. So, hey, man, listen, I'm excited about that one. That that one is going to change lives. Well, I love you. I thank God for you. Thank you for spending this time with me, especially on a day like today. I want you to know that you're on top and you're going high. Your God is more in store for you. So guess what? We will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.